<clears throat> is it precisely timed out at 7.05? I, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I Joe, I'm Joe Choppy, Fios one, uh, well, no, I don't even have to tell you say that. I'm Joe Choppy, and welcome to the Joe Choppy uh, Weather Show uh, here on my YouTube channel, and we are joined tonight by, uh, who am I joined by? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think we're about thirty seconds too too early or whatever. But we'll we'll start if you say it's time to start. It's time to start. Yes, I have to tell you, Mr. Rayo, um, this is it's October thirty first and it's Halloween. Uh, I can remember a few big storms in early November that have created some severe weather outbreaks, but this one is pretty extensive. To have right now, we have. Some a watch box, either uh, a, a severe thunderstorm watch, up at the uh, at the top of the screen in into New York State, and also a severe thunderstorm watch at the bottom uh, down in uh, Southeast Georgia, and three working tornado. At one point, it was four. Mm -hmm. We've got three working tornado watches up right now from South Carolina all the way up into North Central Pennsylvania. I I'm right. I can't remember uh, something this extensive at this time of year. Yeah, this would be uh, more likely if you would uh, if we were in the month of April or May or uh, toward the end of summer. But here we are, just about ready to move into November, and this is kind of odd. Although I do remember one particular scenario, although not as extensive as this, back in the late uh, '80s. In fact, it was 1989, about a week before Thanksgiving. Uh, there was a severe outbreak up in uh, New York State, which uh, unfortunately led to fatalities. Uh, a, a very, I think it was a microburst that hit a, an elementary school in upstate New York. And then a week after that... Was that we, around the Albany area? Uh, south of Albany, I think it was like around Kingston. Okay. And then a week after that, we had a snowstorm that coincided with Thanksgiving. Right, and that, we, we actually had talked about that... Um, in the last couple of nights, that, that, that particular storm came up in conversation. Uh, that Thanksgiving storm, uh, the, the things I remember about it were the fact that uh, I had I got eight inches of snow out of it in, in central Long Island right. after being told by so many people that it just doesn't ever snow at the coast. <laughs> Let a, and, and, of course, it was November. Uh, the next morning, it was 11 above zero. Remember that well, yes. By the time we got to the afternoon, it was 50. Hmm. But that was the coldest low of the winter. That was the heaviest snow of the entire winter. The December that year, December of 89, was brutally Frigid. cold. Frigid. And then winter just ne disappeared and never Completely. was never to, uh, to, to be seen. That was a very odd winter. Now, I don't know so, about this winter, so uh, this upcoming winter... Yeah, I don't know if you want to base or try to base anything on what's happening tonight, but... You can't really draw parallels. I, I think th these are the sorts of things that you look back in hindsight and you say, right. and you make these connections and say, we had A, therefore we had B, and you try to make the case and say, well, okay, so we have A again now, we're going to have B again. And it, no, you, it, know, you know it doesn't really work doesn't that way. It doesn't work right. that way, yeah. So very busy up and down the East Coast with the severe weather tonight. Uh, we... Um, are also, at least from the standpoint of trying to be a little some, somewhat optimistic, in that the pattern does tend to relax a bit over the weekend. When we look uh, at, into next week, as we look at WPC's rainfall forecast map, a lot of what you see here in the east is front end loaded. Uh, and uh, other than that, I think we're going to have a relatively quiet period coming up, which is which is good. We just had uh, uh, you know a couple of tropical systems in the mix. Uh, two, um, I would classify as probably major systems impacting the eastern half of the United States in one form or another. So it looks like the pattern wants to relax, and I think WPC's map kind of says that. Well, we're going to have an atmospheric hemorrhage of sorts in the coming hours. Uh, uh, first of all, we have the actual cold front that will be moving on through. That will be coming through sometime between midnight and 2 a.m. in the tri-state New York City area. And uh, incidentally, we also have a severe thunderstorm watch, as you just mentioned, at the top of the... Uh, program here, not for New York City proper, but for areas to the north, up across Dutchess and Ulster County, for example, uh, there underneath the watch. And I found that kind of rather interesting because the last few days, we it, this all started at first with maybe general thunderstorm activity here right. for tonight, and then they started, they being the uh, Storm Prediction <coughs> Center in Norman, Oklahoma, started suggesting that, well, there may be more active weather 
to the south and west over parts of Pennsylvania. And, of course, it turns out to be to the north and east. It turns out to be to the north and east. Uh, and, so, well, that's always that, the case. But what I really would fear is not so much the, uh, the front with the uh, convective activity tonight, but what comes afterwards. I think there's going to be several hours. Well, well so let, that, let's talk about that because yeah. you know one of the things that with the signature here that you uh, you look at in terms of the isobar. <clears> so, you know, here's our low, which is now a wrapped up 992 low, sitting uh, just north of the western uh, northwest shores of Lake Huron of Lake Ontario. Excuse me, and uh, you've got your watch boxes here that I have indicated. Now I'm gonna, you know, let's do it. Let's do the colors right. Let's do the front, the cold front in blue. Uh, so we've got our, you know, coal front that is running uh, just to our west. And, you know, one of the things, Joe, that stands out to me is the fact that you've got these, this V-shape, these V-shape, the, the isobars here. There's a, th this front's right. sharp. Right. This is no slouch here. Right. This is a very sharp front. And, you know, you made the point yesterday that when you get these sharp fronts sometimes, you get these wicked wind shifts that go from south to, to west or northwest right. at almost the blink of an eye. Right. That's when you can get some really solid bursts of wind. Right, and I think that that is going to be the story for tonight. The frontal passage, and almost instantaneously, you can you can be sitting by your window and you say, oh yeah, it's, it's raining, and I, I thought I saw a little lightning, and all of a sudden, bang, that wind just revs up, and uh, it can be actually rather frightening, especially since it comes tonight in the overnight hours. But I think uh, 50 mile per hour wind gusts or even stronger are a fairly good bet for much of the tri-state region. Now, I'm, you and I were discussing this. Why is it that there are wind advisories for, let's say, uh, the southern? Oh, yeah, West there's some. That, yeah, there's some. There's a lot of weird stuff. There's that's a lot going of discrepancy. The 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 we, discussion. No, hold on to that. We come back okay. to the warning page, so we'll I'll, I'll bring it up and we can show everybody right. what's right. going on. But um, so I got I I just laid the radar. Over the uh, this is by the way, folks. You can you can have access to this easy. easy. This is at the SPC uh, website, spc.noaa.gov, and uh, you just go to uh, mesoscale analysis, and you can have a field day here. But uh, I just laid there was a couple of things that stand out to me with respect to the radar. This sort of continuous area uh, that, uh, that runs up from the St. Lawrence Valley, and I'm going to switch to the southeast view in a moment. But it goes all the way south. The other thing I noticed, it might be a little hard to see on this map. Uh, you speak of the winds. The, uh, the winds along the coast are already running at about 30 to 35 miles an hour. And we're, we've been seeing gusts into the 30s on Long Island and even right. in the Hudson Valley. Uh, but one thing I did notice with this, Joe, is the fact that the dew points have shot up. The dew points are up in the mid-60s all the way up to Albany. I mean, right. when do you see that this time of year? It's juicy. You see dew points. This is really a, a very, very ripe situation here. We had ambient air temperatures <clears throat> in the Hudson Valley, in parts of the Hudson Valley, at or above 70 today on this, the last day of October. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was a, you know, you this is a setup you just don't see very often. Now I'm going to just jump to the mid-Atlantic states because we've got those working um, tornado watches up. Let me just put those up. And the, by the way, if you are watching this uh, on a replay, it is 12 minutes after 7 Eastern time. So if you're watching this later on, obviously what you're looking at is dated. So please make sure you go get the latest weather information by messaging Joe. No, uh, you could do that, uh, but you could get it a little bit faster if you go to weather.gov. Okay, so just make, uh, just make a note of that. So we've got these working tornado watches from north central PA clear down into South Carolina. You've got, you know, this sort of snaky line that runs all the way south. But, I mean, this is just really um, just as solid as a cold front as you're going to see pushing into the east. And as we were just pointing out before with regards to uh, the dew points, again, a little hard to see. But, you know, you head down into Maryland and Virginia. You know, it was in the 70s in New Jersey today. No. It, it's, it's right now at 7 o'clock. I don't know what the highs were today. But it's mid and upper 70s all the way down uh, through uh, the Carolinas. So this is, as, this is as juicy an air mass as you can get. And behind the gel, we've got 40s and 30s. And uh, Chicago, we're gonna, I want to talk about Chicago too because they're getting some snow. Right. They've had moderate snow there for the last three or four hours. Milwaukee, two to five inches expected, I think, for right. that area. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, there's quite a contrast in terms of temperature and air masses. And uh, what else can you say except we're... At least the kids, I've been saying this the last couple of days, I mean, dreary and kind of wet or damp or whatever, but you can't ask for a much warmer 
weather regime for Halloween than what, what, what we had today uh, or this evening. I'm going to put a, the, um, the 500 millibar over this so you can see the depth of this trough. Not the, I don't want you to see the menu. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the depth of this trough at the 18,000 foot level, I mean, this thing is really very sharp and about to go uh, negative, which is you, always a signature that you got a problem. Yes, and uh, I think the uh, one, one reason I think that we're going to get the very strong gusty winds tonight is uh, this ribbon of energy that's going to be moving in behind the actual frontal passage between midnight and dawn or after the frontal passage to about uh, the early hours of the morning. And that, when I, I've seen that signature before, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, situations where we've had those winds gust upwards to, you know, 40, 50, even higher than that miles per hour. And there is going to be a concern. I mean, I think uh, we may have to worry about power outages. I know up where I live, uh, a situation like this, usually I said to you know, I call my wife and I said, get ready with the power is going to go off tonight, probably because of this fierce wind. And tomorrow, even though it'll be a breezy day by the standards of a typical day, the winds will still be rather busy. They will not be as busy or as fierce, again, and as I think we're going to see in that three or four hour interval, let's say between three and six or three and seven a.m. Right. Tonight and tomorrow morning. Let me, let, I'm gonna have a little fun here. Hang on one second. I wanna go back to the main menu. Let's go back to the, the Northeast again. Because I want to show, let's show this upper trough first. And then we can take a look. Where is it? All right, so let's go to, there's the, so this is, this is what's happening. You know, we, 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 with this solid cutoff low in the uh, eastern lakes that is um, lifting up, you know, this long negatively tilted trough. And it, it's just really impressive here. I'm going to just roll it along so you can see starting from uh, the initial position and then uh, we're going to run it to uh, two hours from now four hours from now six hours from now so at this point six hours from now look at the, that the, yeah i mean that's crazy that that's probably where you know, we're talking about 10 or 11 o'clock it's probably around the time where you're going to see the maximum uh, the these thunderstorms peak out in intensity and after that, they might start to weaken as they uh, as they move uh, eastward uh, from uh, from that peak intensity. So maybe by the time they get to New York City or for Long Island, they they'll be in a weaker state. I don't think that matters with respect no. to the wind. No, we're still going to get these you know bursts that are going to occur. Now, what's on the screen right now is what 11 p.m. Eastern time. This or? is uh, I believe it's 11 <clears throat> p.m. Eastern time. Let I me just double those, check. Hang see on. those those lines are just like bunched together over. Uh, over the uh, eastern Great Lakes area. That's yeah, what I'm talking just, about. Just when, when right that, there. When that zone comes roaring across <clears throat> after midnight toward daybreak on uh, Friday morning, I think that's what's going to propel the winds on a course toward 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, uh, possibly. I, I'm sorry for jumping around, folks. This is uh, it's a little hard to handle. <clears throat> you got to run the mouse over uh, <clears throat> in a certain you know in a certain way, and as soon as I move it to something else. Just want to take a look, see if they got something where you could see the wind here. Um, what do you think about this? This is surf. Is that surface to two two kilometers? Well, is this wind shear. <laughs> um, I just wanted to see if they had surface wind here somewhere. Temperature, wind, dew point. They don't have two meter, uh, do they? Or I'm um, just taking a look. So let's see if we can make heads or tails of this. All right, you know what? I got to make this a little bit smaller, so I can get the menu and get the whole thing on the screen. All right, so let's go to zero two four six. So this is where the front is just about to the coast. So you can see that the V shape of the. Why does it keep doing that? It keeps jumping around. So this is six hours from now. I got to hold that mouse right over that that small spot, um, but, but look at that. I mean, that's that's going to come rolling through here like one of those forty-ton Mack trucks, you know. Yeah, that southerly winds <laughs> at thirty to forty here. I, I apologize, folks. It's very hard to hold the mouse over the uh, over the time frame here, and so so you've got those thirty to forty knot southerly winds ahead of it, and you, you know this, the the really sharp wind shift behind it. I mean, this is just really a wrap. This is a very, very tight system, and it's going to do what it's going to do. 
and then we'll finally get it out of here and start to see some genuine improvement uh, as we um, go forward. The uh, radar tonight is pretty busy, Mr. Rayo, as I said, uh, with rain up into northern New England now, and you've got, looks like one line of storms moving uh, from about Syracuse southwest toward Bradford, and then you've got a couple of other would look like little line segments of heavy thunderstorms in south central PA near near and west of Altoona and then there's some more as you snake down into western North Carolina and particularly and you get into South Carolina looks like some pretty big cells going on uh, over in uh, in that area a narrow snaky line and that uh, that's going to and with the front moving as quickly as it will it's almost going to be like it's cracking the whip so to speak and unfortunately we're going to be in the line of fire uh, later on tonight and into the pre-dawn hours of Friday. That's mostly snow, by the way, up in uh, northwestern uh, Michigan. The southern end of that is probably rain. But uh, there's, uh, you know, there was snow in and around Chicago, as I was pointing out earlier, uh, and back up further north. So this whole low will pull away to the northeast. And by the way, just to take a look at this from the standpoint of the, uh, the water vapor imagery, and this is the mid-level. I mean, look at that trough. Look at that upper low. Right. It stands out so well. The yellow is is all dry air or drier air, and as it, as the system shifts eastward, you can follow the connection of the of the moisture. It, it still has a tropical feed to it coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> it's like a, as I see, I used on one of my. Uh feeds this evening. I said this is like a gigantic meteorological swizzle stick, if you will, Yeah. Uh, mixing the very, very moist air with the very dry air that is streaming right now across Texas and Arkansas, and then is kind of looping up in a narrow loop, but looping up into uh, the uh, eastern uh, UP of Michigan, uh, LP, uh, Lower Peninsula of Michigan. It's, it's quite amazing. It is. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at uh, the latest NAM model run today for, for this evening. And I looked at the short range, just looking at the HRRR. We can take a look at that after we get done with this. Uh, and the NAM3, they all have it looking differently. I, I, I pull up, you know, I always try to uh, match it up to reality. And we have the radar uh, from right at the moment. If you look at the radar, Joe, and then you look at the NAM, I mean, it's close. It's not too bad. It seems like it's got the intensity from Virginia northward, it doesn't seem to be handling the intensity from North Carolina southward. Uh, it does flare up that line. This is at 11 o'clock tonight, approaching the western New Jersey border, and it holds together until it gets into eastern New Jersey. The northern part's still there, the southern part's still there, and you know we kind of see it weaken. Right. And, 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 and Again, I don't think it makes a difference, other than the f with respect to the fact that I still would expect to see, you know, these these really strong gusty winds. They're not going to be uh, dependent on whether there are thunderstorms there going on no, or not. No, no. Uh, uh, again, the it, it's really like two separate entities or two separate episodes of uh, atmospheric uh, conditions. The uh, the showers and possible thunderstorms, be it strong to severe or maybe just a few rumbles of thunder. That's going to come between midnight and 2 in the morning. And then after that, we go to phase 2, which will be those very intense winds. And as I said, although Friday, by the most standards, will be a rather gusty, breezy day, the really significant part of the wind is going to come in that uh, 3 or 4 hour time frame between about 2 or 3 a.m. to about 6 or 7 in the morning. That's when we may be seeing those... Uh, concentrated or more potent gusts right. of 40 and 50 miles an hour. The HRRR to me, uh, this is the latest HRRR uh, from 5 o'clock uh, this afternoon. Uh, I, I think the NAM has a, a, a better look uh, with what's going on, but even here you see how the line just kind of uh, flares up between now and say 9, 10 o'clock, and this is at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, this right. particular point, and then it just kind of loses it after that. I think it loses it too quickly. Uh, we had a situation uh, sometime earlier in the summer, I, was, we, I, I brought it up to you earlier today, that <clears throat> wound up clobbering parts of Long Island with a, something that the models didn't happen. It was, and it was an event that happened at night. Right. Models didn't hold on to uh, handle it very well at all. Uh, but there was a lot of <clears throat> support aloft. See, that's the one thing I'm wondering here. You can make a case and say, okay, maybe there's a little bit of a marine layer issue along the coast that will wind up weakening these storms. On the other hand, 
you do have a really strong upper trough that's lifting up and going negative. So right. I think the support aloft may be more <clears throat> important here. Right. And, uh, yeah, and this, the, uh, don't forget the forward speed of this thing as well. Um, and, you know, just just sheer force, just the, 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 the upward movement of the atmosphere uh, enough to, uh, if not maintain, at least to uh, uh, continue that uh, threat of convective activity, even once it gets past New York City and on to the coastal areas of uh, Connecticut and Long Island. Now, Lee Goldberg may be watching the show tonight because he's a big fan. I'm sure he's writing all this down for his 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> Just kidding. Okay, so uh, we were talking about the winds, and I brought up the H Triple R ten meter wind. Uh, this is sustained. Uh, this is at midnight tonight, and you can, along the coast you get into those. These are all gales that you see in Chesapeake Bay, Delaware Bay, along the New Jersey coast, the shores of Long Island, and it looks like they peak out here, Joe. This is at about one two a.m. Starting to see, you see those little dots of red there in New right. York Harbor. Right. That's 40 knots sustained. And you're also seeing you know, little peaks of green, uh, which would be 20 to 30 in some of the inland areas as well. So if, and you, if you see the isobars, folks, you see that tight V that moves off. So that's when we'll play it out in terms of the big wind. So figure sometime from about 11 p.m. till 3 or 4 a.m., uh, we're going to, going to get those really sharp wind gusts. Still definitely on the windy side to start the day tomorrow. I thought the winds would ease a bit as we go through the day. Yes. Still be breezy, yeah. but they will ease probably faster than they otherwise would. Uh, we should look at the NAM 3 because uh, it's not often that we get an opportunity to deal with uh, a front like this. And the NAM 3 wind field is um, uh, much more dynamic, uh, mm -hmm. showing... Uh, a much larger area inland of 20 to 30 and along the coast you know you've got this pretty uh, fairly large area of uh, 35 40 knots plus sustained these are sustained winds folks and by the way look at lake erie and lake ontario because they're especially lake ontario in a situation like this with the deep low up in eastern canada uh, and the upper trough coming through uh, they're getting some fierce winds there but it's 50 knots sustained there's a little purple in the middle of lake ontario uh, uh this is for uh early tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Well, the lakes are warming it up in the bullpen, so to speak, for the uh, lake effect, which will be taking uh, hold, I'm sure, in the coming uh, days and, and weeks. And weeks. <clears throat> By the way, really quick, while I'm switching maps, just speaking of lake effect, it's, it's always been my goal uh, to one day, before I go to the um, big lake effect place up in the sky, mm -hmm. um, to experience uh, lake effect, uh, have you ever gone up in the winter time up in that no. part of New York? So you have. No, it's a very funny story. I, I, my when my daughter was when we were driving my daughter uh, around looking for prospective colleges for her to go to, we went up to uh, um, uh, SUNY Oswego, which literally is right at right at the edge of uh, Lake Ontario. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, and I mean up there, it doesn't look like a lake. It looks like the ocean. Mm -hmm. That's how big the, the oh yeah, and so. Here's this person, uh, w one of the uh, young uh, people who are just talking about the school in general and you know about, uh, what, what all the positives that you can get out of it. Now, are there any questions? And I just raised my hand innocently and I said, "I heard that it snows here up uh, quite a bit. Can, can you innocent? Can you yeah innocent innocent just to get just to get a rise out of her?" And said, "Yes, it does snow quite a bit." But interestingly, she said that they never close at the college. Itself, it doesn't snow quite as much as in the in the town itself. Well, there's That's all sorts of the bands are, hills yeah. and localization, shadow right. effects, and that kind of thing. Right. By the way, real fast, the Nam Three, which always loves to to paint this sort of Armageddon scenario with the thunderstorms that they have. The way you look at this, also again, timing eleven o'clock. It's got this, you know, what looks like a an absolute powerhouse line. It's probably overdone in its in its own way. And then it moves on out. It still actually holds it together somewhat as it moves across New Jersey and over Long Island tonight. Well, there's but again, nothing more spookier than being up at around midnight on Halloween night and suddenly seeing the sky light up with a few flashes of lightning or hear a rumble or two of thunder off in the distance. I, you know, I, with, with all the talk today about canceling people canceling <clears throat> Halloween, rescheduling Halloween, which is not something that, we, that they did when we were children because um, they... 
it does rain on Halloween from time to time. Yes, so, it does. Okay, so um, and what I thought was in terms of Morticia Adams and and Gomez Adams that you could you could picture they're talking about the the uh, the series from the mid sixties. You right. could picture Carol and Jones standing outside in the Halloween day, uh, Halloween day like this, just like look, looking up and saying, "Oh, what an absolutely beautiful, beautiful. day!" It's, yes, lovely. I, of course, of course, Congress fixed it now so that by extending daylight saving time for another week we have now what we didn't have when you and I were growing right, up, which is, which is a much brighter evening or a late afternoon the sun would have been down by 5 o'clock yeah. and it doesn't go down to I've always six. been a Halloween Scrooge anyway yeah. um, alright so here's let's take a look at the GFS going forward so this, this storm pulls out Looks like we've got a nice chilly air mass coming into the eastern part of the United States for Friday and the weekend there's a little wave that develops off the southeast coast that goes way out uh, but it actually helps to reinforce the the chilly air to into early next week I didn't really see anything of consequence it doesn't look like anything major going on uh, weak fronts maybe one I don't know about Wednesday or so or right. Tuesday night Wednesday then it looks like another front that comes in uh, toward the end of next week and now we start to get into the model uh, the model silliness uh, for um, yeah. this is late next week, so right. this would be a week from tomorrow. Right. Uh, last couple of runs have done something in one form or another like this. I, I had a couple of people have already asked me about it, and I my response to the to, to them has been no. <laughs> okay, you just can't look at something like this uh, at at at, uh, at this stage of the game, and and it doesn't really have any value. Right. Uh, and- but. I, I think the overall flavor going forward for the first couple of weeks in November is it just it, it doesn't really look it certainly doesn't look like the kind of pattern that we've just had which has been pretty active you've got these troughs in the east Joe but there's no room there's no real room to sharpen they stay very broad uh, you know a lot but, of it shears off yeah, yeah but you do have energy that's coming down out of Canada it's a colder flow mm-hmm. uh, through uh, next week and while one trough does lift out, another one looks like it wants to drop in in the longer range. Uh, I just don't see any big storms coming out of, out of a situation like this. If this were right, and this is out at about day 13 or so, it would get pretty cold here. Right. That, that would be one takeaway. But uh, in terms of storminess, um, not seeing it here at this point. Just the air mass is coming down from out of Canada. It will be getting colder. Uh, for the, certainly seasonal to below normal, a brief warm ups in between. You get these weather these weather fronts to go by, and not a whole lot in the way of precip. And the, just a quickie review: last year we had an unseasonably cold or chilly November with that unusual snowfall in the middle of the month. December was one of the warmest December's on record uh, in this part of the country, about two to three degrees above normal. We had a relatively mild January, although it did turn sharply colder. Well, at the end just of the month, uh, just a question: January. When you say warmest December, or one of the warmest December's on record at, at three above normal, are you just speaking in generalities for the Northeast? Because if you if you're talking specific, you know the warmest November uh, December's on record. It was like is the one from December of uh, fifteen, I believe it was, yeah. where we were, you know, off the charts. I don't know. 15, 16 degrees above normal for the month. I remember. I don't think it was a top 10 warm December <clears throat> last year. Well, I remember reading uh, on the uh, website, and by the way, if any of you care to, you can look at it yourself. NOAA's State of the Climate, which gives the, the monthly summations of uh, precipitation and temperature, and al- along with that weather highlights, somehow the, the number 2.6 above normal. Now, I'm not sure if that was for the country in general, Average it it must have been. Or, it's probably what they mean when yeah, they say that. Or eastern United States. But in any case, it was a mild December. Much of January was mild. Then it, the, the, the thermometer caved during that last week of January. Bitter cold, wind chills of you know 50 below zero, if you remember. February and March were cold. And then all of a sudden, we were out of it. In it, the, it, it we had a normal progression from winter to spring last year, and that's how I saw it. Yeah. Um, Unlike the past few years, where there seem to have been getting these extensions of winter going into uh, uh, April and um, almost into early May, yeah. Uh, of course, everybody seems to think that that they're entitled to a Dickinsonian, you know, <laughs> everything's got to be nice and smooth, and you, you, the, the whole, um, 
uh, it gets colder by a little bit every day. Now, can I bring up et the... Et cetera, et cetera. Can I bring up... Or the, warmer. We mentioned at the, Euro, at the beginning of the show. Go ahead. There's a little discrepancy about where the wind advisories have been posted. Oh, yeah. Let's right let's, let's let's talk about that. So let, let me bring up the weather services. Um, you know, and, and, and for, for folks like us who, you know, work in television land, these are the things that kind of drive us to uh, drink things other than non-alcoholic beverages because uh, it drives us crazy. Uh, but they... For whatever reason, and I'm not understanding why. So this is this is New York. They have um, winter weather. I'm sorry. They have the wind advisories up for Southern Westchester, which is just north of New York City, and of course you see it up for Long Island. And then they, you can't see it on this map, but where there's that severe thunderstorm watch, which is taking precedent, right, Joe? There's wind right. advisories from there north. Right. But for some reason, for the three counties. For the two and a half counties in between, there is no wind advisory, and I and I asked you about that. I said I don't get it. Why they they said they being the uh, folks over at the National Weather Service in New York, based in Upton, Long Island, which is out in eastern Long Island, they said, well, we figure that uh, areas to the north and west in the Orange County, Putnam County, Rockland County area, northern Westchester, that there would only be isolated wind gusts, which would not warrant the issuance of a wind advisory. Okay, that's all well and good, except their neighbors, the National Weather Service in Albany, issued wind advisories for everybody for, up for, north. For Duchess County, right. Ulster mm. County, everybody. You can't up to get the north. more inland than that. Right, and you know, so, so there's one big hole. And up through the Catskills. It's, 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 it just makes, I don't know, it, it, the same thing. You've got wind advisories in Pennsylvania, and they do cut off at some point, and then they're not up for much of western New Jersey, but they are up for the coastal counties. I know there's this sort of effort, I guess, to try to get as localized as you can. I, I happen to think that sometimes this stuff is, is they overthink it too much. Well, it's like micromanaging a baseball game. You micromanage a, a forecast. I personally, and I said this on my Facebook page, I personally would have just broad brushed the whole Hudson Valley with a wind advisory and be done with it. You know, also, I, I kind of wonder whether electrical companies like NYSEG, for example, look at these advisories or watches or warnings very carefully in advance of the impending storm and say, okay, they're not under a wind advisory. They're not, but they're up here and down here. So let's concentrate our efforts. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll schedule trucks to be on the, on the ready for this area and that right. area. And then right in the middle where there's no advisories, if indeed there are, you know, severe winds and power lines come down, uh, well, we, we weren't aware of that. There were no advisories. Right. Like, you know, that kind so, of thing. By the way, the, um, one of the consequences of this storm is a very large area of, of uh, freeze watches and warnings that are up from east Texas through northern Louisiana, northern Mississippi, Alabama, northwest Georgia, all the way up through the Ohio Valley. Uh, so this has really brought down some, some very cold air. We still have some winter weather advisories up in, in Michigan, small part of Montana. Uh, we all have uh, we still have some red flag warnings going on and some freeze watches and warnings in parts of, of central and southern California, a remnant of all the wildfires. The wildfires are still going on in some places. Uh, but um, other than that, uh, the rest of the country looks to be a bit on the quiet side. There was one thing I wanted to look up now that you reminded me. Let me see if I can find it. Um, because I thought this was kind of funny. Hang on. Uh, and with the cold air coming in tomorrow night, I mean, for some places like where I live up in Putnam County, this probably is going to end the growing season tomorrow night with places dropping into the upper 20s. Um, and what I have to do tomorrow before I leave for work is uh, make sure that uh, we turn off all the water because we don't want any water in the pipes to freeze. Do you know what the power company is in Orange County? It might be, uh, uh, oh, um, it's not NYSIG. It's not Con Ed. It's what about Rockland? Orange, Orange and Rockland Utility, Orange I think. Orange and... I want to look something up because I, I, before I say anything, I want to just see something. Um, <clears throat> okay... Yeah, there you go. Um, Are you looking up what they charge? Or? No, 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 no. I wanted to see if they have, they had a statement here with regards to uh, the weather tonight. You know, I usually get a statement emailed to me as a NYSIG customer 
when there's a significant storm, and I was surprised. that I've not gotten anything from NYSIG, which has me a little worried. Uh, I hope they're prepared and are ready for this, because uh, this, I think, is going to be a very significant uh, situation tonight, or in the wee hours of the morning tomorrow. The ah, most frustrating that's what thing, I want. The most frustrating thing is to call your electric company and get the recording and hear the woman on the other end saying, 1,634 people, uh, including your home, are without power. The ex expected uh, time of uh, going back online will be, you know, and they give you like eight or nine hours from now. <laughs> okay, never mind. I was just, I wanted to see, I, I, somebody told me, they must have misread it, but they said that one of the power companies, you know, with their um, alert talking about the weather tonight, was talking about heavy rain, strong winds, and then changing over to snow. Which oh. is, <laughs> you know, you're a, you're a little early, whoever it was. Yeah. It was, probably was misread. Yeah. Um, they kind of do that a lot in the news in the newsroom business. They yeah. misread things, uh, <laughs> and it could turn to snow before it ends tomorrow morning. We'll That's, have Joe with the forecast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you come on and you and you say no, <laughs> and the producer's going he has a meltdown because you have three minutes to fill and you refuse to say another exactly. word. Exactly. All right, let's check out and see if we got any. Oh, we got a nice crowd tonight, Joe. One hundred thirty-five folks on tonight, which is uh, really good to see. Um, Timothy Veltman pointing out that National Grid, where he is, has extra people and crews on staff up his way for potential power outages and tree damage. Chuck Cardillo says this weather pattern does not look anything like last year. Uh, with this weather pattern, would that favor Alberta Clippers? Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's going to be favoring lows that are going to be coming ar down around Canada, moving along the border, Chuck. I don't, you know, whether any of them have the... Um, uh, the tendency to want to dig further south and east is it, it, it doesn't it, it's hard to say at this stage of the game going out um, that far north Scott Briller the chairman he's the chairman here okay. he's almost always the first one on says that since 19, 1869 Central Park has had 30 Novembers with at least one inch of snow 20 went on to have above average snowfall for the winter so that's an interesting so two thirds, right. if it's thirty winters, two thirds of them wind up with above normal um, winter time, uh, winter um, uh, winters for snowfall. And by the way, we were talking last night uh, with regards to snowing in November, and I recall the statistic in the back of my mind was that it works out to about once every ten years you get an right. accumulate, accumulating snow right. in November. And Scott looked it up and he pointed out that that was the case if you go back to about 1960 or so. It's one in ten, but if you go back to the eighteen hundred, right, then it's one in five. Oh, okay. So, and we've had two in this decade. So, because mm -hmm. uh, in uh, November of twenty uh, twelve, after Sandy, right, and then of course what happened last year, and I think that we might have had even another one somewhere in between. I, don't I think know. there was one that uh, coincided with uh, Thanksgiving, the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, that might have been twenty fourteen, I think. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct, you can ask him if he wants to look it up or whatever. I, he might. Oh, sh do. Scott's probably digging already. <laughs> uh, Johnny Quest up in the in the mountains of northwestern Virginia. Well, he's up at like three thousand feet, and he uh, said it looks like the mountains helped him out, weakening the thunderstorms. Uh, that's probably the mountains do have impact on some of these storms sometimes, right. depending on you know the trajectory and what kind of an upper air you have so they probably did to a certain extent like when we talk about a hurricane heading for haiti yes <laughs> the, the, the high hills breaking the storm up oh that happens a lot especially yeah. uh, you, you, they, they uh many a storm has been torn uh, there's been many a hurricane that's come into to the dominican republic and haiti and, right. and come out the other side as a uh, a tropical storm or a tropical yeah. even a tropical uh depression David Schwartz, uh, two tornado warnings, one in Virginia near Halifax County, one in North Carolina over Leesburg, both moving northeast at 55 miles an hour. Boy, that's they're racing. Right. Um, let me take a look. Let me just punch up and see what's going on. Yeah, we do have, actually. Let me just, let, let's bring this up so everybody can see. So we've got actually two working tornadoes, tornado warnings from the Weather Service in uh uh, Black uh, Blacksburg, Virginia, and here we go. Come on, thank you very much. Yeah, these these things I mentioned a little while ago. I mean, these the forward speed on some of these things really. Yeah, you can see that you got the two tornado warnings up 
uh, here. This is Blacksburg, Virginia, and here's their radar. So you can, that's a pretty look. That's a pretty sharp yeah. looking line. Yep. Yeah. You know, take a look at that. That is a strong line of cells there that's moving uh, across. Um, I'm try, they're, they're just outside of Raleigh Durham now, and you can see where the tornado warnings have been posted. Let's let me let's drop down to let's go a little bit further to the east. You can see them on the edge of the Wakefield radar, uh, coming into view here. Uh, they're west of Roanoke and just on the edge of Charlottesville. This is all going to get into the Washington D.C. area before too long. Uh, going further north, this is the Dover radar. So I'll jump back westward so you can see it here. Big cells there up in western Maryland from Harrisburg. Uh, down to uh, just about outside the Washington D.C. Right outside of Washington D.C. Is that it? No, I, I it's, that, that is in Washington. I can't read. Is that Arlington or Burlington or? I, Burlington. I can't see what that Bal is. Baltimore or? No, Baltimore is up here. With an east. Here's Washington. I can't read what the town is there. There's Harrisonburg is out here. Um, I, it it just kind of. It just gets all blurred out. I can't see it. Anyway, you get the point, folks. You can see where it is on here. And I'll just jump to, um, here's Mount Holly's radar. So they haven't really come into view of the Mount Holly radar yet. And back to Central, P this is Pittsburgh. Uh, so you see the back edge, which means that CTP should be the one in the middle. And there's the one through uh, Central PA with those strong source, uh, cells from Harrisburg. A few more strong cells up near... Um, Williamsport, and now we get into New York State, the north and west of Binghamton. Just very busy up here with yeah. the, uh, in terms of the showers and storms. Again, it's 745, folks. So if you're watching this on a replay, I would just remind you again, just be sure to go to weather.gov to uh, check out uh, the latest uh, radars uh, so that you have uh, up the updated weather information and not something that is, um, is dated. And I'm trying to get this. There we go. Make it disappear there. Um, all right, let me get back to the chat board. Hang on one second. Keith James says it's warm in Paramus. <laughs> welcome, to just, the, welcome to the club. Yes. Yeah. With those dew points so high, you're in the low. You, uh, some places up there about seventy four or five. Um, just joining through over here, Joe Rayo. Have, do you have any thoughts on the winter? On this winter, do you have any thoughts on this winter? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get cold. <laughs> Izzy, are you using like a spell? Some when you're typing it up, where it like automatically completes your sentences because it, it it doesn't always translate quite well. So I'm I, I, I'm I'm apologize. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out sometimes what the well, he's wording saying, is. He's saying here, Lakewood <clears throat> many times get gets rain and Freehold gets snow. That would make some sense because. Uh, Freehold is is inland and uh, away from Lakewood, which is closer to the coastline. So, uh, I did for many years a radio station in Tom's River, WOBM. You in fact did that station yes. for a while, sitting in for Mr. Casper, and they had all kinds of crazy uh, uh, micro uh, issues. Oh yeah, always uh, when I was on shift too. <laughs> Raymond, uh, Raymond, you haven't been on in ages. You must be dancing in the streets with the watch box going all the way up. Uh, into Albany. He's pointing out that uh, street lights are street flickering. Lights are flickering. Uh, oh, voice to type. Okay, is he? Uh, sometimes it comes. You know, when uh, when I'm trying to read it back, it doesn't always read back. Uh, it, I think it makes up its own words sometimes. Uh, Ryan Ford in Pompton Lakes pointing out that it's getting pretty windy, even though the front's not there yet. Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, and uh, I'm just trying to check. I'm just running back here. Uh, through, uh, I'll check by the way, David Schwartz. Thanks. I'll check tornadohq.com. I'll, I'll have to do it off screen to see if, if, if it's something that I, I, I can use on the air without getting uh, into trouble. Otherwise, I could send them an email and hopefully they would respond. Oh, and uh, Jaylon Perry. Javon Perry, yes, 2014. It was 2014, Wednesday, Thanksgiving. Yeah, 2015. And it was among his favorites. He says, uh, Thanksgiving Eve and 2015 was snowy. Well, you're uh, you know up in the in in, south, in southern New England up <clears throat> up to Boston as I remember that year it was it was a February into early March was unrelenting with uh, storm after storm bringing heavy snow one after another after another. Now was that the winter when Boston went over? <clears throat> I, I think that that was. Yeah. Um, I, I think that was. I remember driving up <clears throat> to New Hampshire. 
uh, at one point and just seeing, you know, just all this snow cover yeah. everywhere. And we had a good deal of snow that uh, February of 15 as right. well uh, up, right. uh, up our way. John, uh, John Sachs, 77. Yes, you do hear correctly. I will be at the Bayonne Library in Bayonne, New Jersey on uh, November the, Wednesday, November the 20th at uh, 7 o'clock, I believe the time is. So uh, put that down on your calendar. And yes, uh, the Bayonne Library being in Bayonne, Bayonne, New Jersey is a pretty sensible place right. for right. it to be. The I Bayonne totally yes. um, agree. Howard Vanderhoff. Uh, is on. Uh, always uh, good to see you, Howard. Uh, you're you're a little bit late, but not too late because we're about to say goodbye anyway. Coming up on um, seven forty nine. Seven forty nine. M G Massey. It's, he says it's blowing hard. Twenty five hundred feet up north of Asheville. I bet. Uh, ahead of that front, you you uh, certainly do. Erica Baker. I did read your message from yesterday. I haven't had a chance to go through all the posts today. Uh, but I will go back. I will go and look later this evening. I promise. Um, Tyler Vlog says he feels a tornado coming to York, Pennsylvania. Well, you know what? You do got some strong storms to your west, so I certainly would uh, would would uh, pay attention uh, to all of this. And uh, Thomas Kellogg up in the Catskills, uh, welcome aboard. Uh, the winds are picking up uh, in the Catskill region. And by the way, if you are new to the channel. Uh, welcome, and be sure to hit subscribe so that you can uh, catch my live streams, which are almost every night. And of course, Joe, time to give a shameless plug, or maybe a not so shameless plug, because you've got your YouTube channel too. So yes. tell everybody about it. Well, uh, we uh, put the uh, YouTube channel, I put a YouTube channel together back about a month or so. That's actually more like six weeks ago. Uh, I'll pull the link up and get, uh, give it and, to everybody, but go ahead. And I um, haven't done really too much with it yet, but hoping to start doing more with it uh, in the days and weeks to come since I'll probably have a lot more free time in the <laughs> well, days that's true. and weeks to come. So, so I'm going to put the channel up there, folks. We, uh, uh, so he's got, a, he's got some videos on there now you can see, uh, that you are can interesting. See, you can see Cardinal Dolan uh, giving an intro. I had a, the great privilege of uh, uh, being interviewed by him for his Sirius XM show uh, back in January, and he did a promo uh, he referred to me as Little Joe Rayo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the first question out of his mouth, he identified me with uh, the famous restaurant in Harlem, and uh, he asked me. He said, "Do you have Do you have the uh, the uh, recipe for for the for the sauce?" I said, "Unfortunately, if I had all of that, I'd be a lot richer right, right now." Than uh, Jeffrey Mara points out, by the way, Fisher's Island EF1 tornado and storing. Uh, Stonington, Connecticut, EF0, and that was last year, October... What is it about October 29th lately? What is it about that date? That date. We had, we had the big snowfall... Uh, in 11. Uh, Sandy, 11, 12. Sandy. Now we've got severe weather outbreak back in uh, last year. It shows you where our memory is, because I have no recollection of this whatsoever. Yeah. Do you? Well, I have the recollection of the storm eight years ago, because... I had 14 inches of heavy, wet snow. And I know, Joe, but as we get older, you might remember all the things from years ago, and you can't remember what you had for breakfast. Yes. You might even not be able to remember that you're sitting here with me yep. right now. Yeah. Well, that's when you, you get You may old. not want to sit here with me right now. You couldn't, you you, you know, you, when you get a, to a certain age, like Casey Stingle, he couldn't tell you what he had for breakfast that day, but he could tell you what he had 50 years ago. Right. David Schwartz pointing out now a third tornado warning has popped up. So there's two working in Virginia, and I'm sorry, two in Virginia, yes, and one in North Carolina. And Chuck, you keep losing the internet. Okay, we have to do something about that, Mr. Cardello. We cannot have you uh, losing the internet during uh, a Joe Chaffee, uh Joe Rayo show. Okay, so don't don't lose the internet anymore. Leeds, New York. Ten minutes from the Catskills. I live in Leeds, New York, where you get a severe thunderstorm because there is some thunderstorms around. Uh, let's wrap it up. It's right. seven fifty-two. So let me just say, Kat, Kathleen Trudy, Nick Cortez, Scott Briller, thanks for hitting super chat tonight. We had a nice crowd, Joe, one hundred twenty-eight folks, which is good. Uh, and if you're watching this on a replay, remember weather.gov because you want to make sure you have uh, the latest weather information uh, with regards to what's on the radar because what's on here is dated. We're almost at eight o'clock Eastern time, so you want to make make sure you got all the latest with all the severe weather. Yep. Download uh, the meteorologist Joe Chaffee weather app, which Joe has, and so does Mrs. Rayo. Yep. Uh, she's constantly reminding him about <laughs> it. Uh, and also, it's there for Android or for the iPhone. 
uh, Angry Ben's Weather app, the Angry Weatherman for Android, hopefully soon out for iPhones as well. We're working on it, and that's also free. Uh, the uh, pay Patreon platform, subscription platform, just two bucks a month, which is where a lot of my weather coverage this winter is going to be. Right yes. There. Right there. Exactly. Uh, that's patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Chaffee. It's on the descriptor to this um, uh, video, the descriptor to this live stream, so you can click from there. That's 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 held up fairly well, right? I don't want that it to really, fall, it, on, my, you know, fall you, on my head or whatever. You mean you don't want it to just go, no! <laughs> <laughs> we can have all sorts of fun here because we've got the bouncing, bouncing. The, the bouncing ball. You can actually turn your head up. Just turn your head back. Wait, 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 right there. Hold on. Are you bouncing on my nose? Yeah, look. <laughs> well, you oh. can't, but you were. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we have a little bit of, uh, with an emphasis on little. Yes. Uh, we're having a little bit of fun. All right, have a great night, everybody. Thanks again for being here. We really appreciate it. And stay safe tonight, because, again, I think the really active weather, and Joe, I think you agree with me, some really active weather between midnight and dawn tomorrow morning. It'll be interesting to see tomorrow morning. I have a feeling here at Files 1 we're going to be doing some uh, uh, reports on cleanup and damage reports, and at least for parts of the tri-state area, because this looks like a rather nasty scenario coming up overnight. Yeah. All right, so uh, be safe. Uh, figure if you're from western New Jersey to eastern Long Island, sometime from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., uh, bursts of wind, heavy thunderstorms if they hold together, and... Uh, that's it, and, and then what gets better tomorrow? And of course, and of course, in the aftermath, we'll have interviews with people saying nobody told us this was going to happen. That's why you come here because yes. we tell you it's going to happen. We, yeah, we try. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>